in this video, I'm using one Comfy UI workflow that can generate ultra realistic images in less than a second. Write the prompt for you with auto prompt and even upscale the result all while running on low VRAM GPUs. So I built a one click Comfy UI workflow that runs Z image turbo and gives you clean, high quality images using just two simple sampler passes. On top of that, I added an auto prompt system. So you don't have to write a long prompt every single time. You can just give a short idea or drop an image and it will write a full Z image turbo prompt for you. There's also an upscaling group in this workflow and here you can see the model switch that lets you switch between a GGUF model and a safe tensor model. If you have low VRAM, you can pick the Q4 GGUF model. And if you have a good GPU with more VRAM, you can select for safe tensor version. You can try BF16 model if your VRAM is high enough. I also added a resolution master node so you can quickly pick a safe resolution for your GPU instead of guessing every time. Now, let me quickly show you the files you need to run this workflow. Right now, there are three main model options for Z Image Turbo that you can use. First is the BF16 Z Tur Image Turbo model. This is the big one, around 12 GB. And it's great if you have 16 GB or more VRAM. Second is the FP8 versions. There are two of them. One is Z Image Turbo FP8 E4 M3 FN. And the other one is Z Image Turbo FP8 E5 M2. In simple words, if you have a 30 or 40 series GPU with decent VRAM, you can go for the E5 M2 build for a bit more quality. And if you are on something like a 50 series card or similar, you can also use E4 M3 FN, which is around 6 GB on disk and very VRAM friendly. For low VRAM users, if you are on something like a 2 to 3 GB graphic card, you can select the Z Image Turbo Q4 KM GGF model. This one is much lighter, but still gives similar quality to BF16 or FP8 when you keep the settings in a good range. In this workflow, I am using Quen 34B FP8 scale as a text encoder file. This is the file that reads your prompt and turns it into something the model understands. You download it and save it in the text encoder in ConfUI. For the VAE, I am using AE Safe Tensors. This is the same VAE that I used in my v Flux workflow and it goes into the VAE folder. I am also using one LoRa called Color Z Image Turbo V1. It makes your image look more like movie stills or film photos. It mainly changes the color, contrast and mood. It does not completely replace your subject. In my setup, I use a small trigger word inside the prompt when I want this LoRa to kick in stronger. So if you want that film look, you can enable this LoRa and add the trigger word in your prompt. And if you don't want it, you can just bypass the LoRa node. Now let's come back to the workflow layout. Right next to that, you can choose auto prompt or manual prompt. Inside the auto prompt system, you get two options. The first option is text to better prompt. For example, you simply type image of a cat in the small text box. The system prompt I wrote for Quen will take that short line and expand it into a detailed prompt that works nicely with Z Image Turbo. So if I type just image of a cat, 
Quen will return a full sentence. You can see from the result that this gives a strong outcome even though you only wrote a tiny prompt. Sometimes you don't know how to write prompts. In that case, you can just give a short text here and Quen will help you by writing the full prompt for you. The second option is image to prompt. For that, you upload an image in the load image node. Then you switch auto prompt to use the image path instead of the text path. In this mode, Gwen looks at your image and writes a prompt based on it. Then I just change the resolution a bit and generate. You can see that the new image has the same concept, but it looks more realistic than the original AI image I uploaded. So this is how you can use auto prompt in two ways, text to better prompt or image to prompt. Now let's talk about the sampling part. Instead of using one sampler, I'm using two samplers in this workflow. The first sampler is your main sampler. I usually set it to six steps. So if you are on low VRAM, you can keep steps low to save memory. For people who want more details, you can increase the steps of the second sampler to six or even up to eight. So the second sampler is like a small refinement pass with denoise set to around 0 0.6 and 6 to 8 steps. It adds more detail to your output. And if you don't care about details and you are trying to save every bit of your VRAM, you can keep the second sampler at 3 steps. So most of the time, the default CFG value is 1. This works well with the image turbo. You can also test a bit higher like CFG2, but do it carefully. When you push CFG, watch your images and make sure they do not become the too sharp or distorted. For my tests, I keep CFG at 1 most of the time and I only play with it a little. Now, I'll explain why this model feels so good to use. First thing, it generates images very fast. On a decent GPU, you get results in less than a second. Sometimes it feels like a few milliseconds. So in one click, you see the output almost instantly. For realism tests and tried a normal portrait, the model was able to generate a very realistic image and after upscaling the quality, it was even better. Every test image I generated came almost instantly. Then I added the film LoRa trigger word to see the difference. And after enabling the LoRa, you can see the colors change in a nice way. The LoRa fixes the color and gives that film mode. So you can easily turn this on when you want your image to feel like a movie frame. Here is another example. I generated an image with this model and the result looked very natural. Then I tested it with an illusion style prompt and the output was also very strong. So this model is not only good for realism, it's also good for illustration type images. Then I also tested it for the text. I asked it to generate an image with the words AI creator tools and this model was able to write the text correctly with no spelling mistakes. So Z image turbo is strong in realism strong in illustration and also strong in text rendering. Now I want to talk about one more interesting thing. In my tests, I noticed 
that this model can keep the environment and style very similar even when I change the face angle in the prompt. It's not 100% exact, but it's close enough for many use cases. Now I wanted to keep the same environment and same style and I only want to change the angle of the face. So I kept the whole base prompt the same and only changed the last line to close up three quarter view from the left looking slightly off camera. I used the same seed and you can see the in new image had a very similar background and lighting. The style was the same but the face angle changed. So when I changed that to from the right and the environment and mood stayed similar again and the subject turned in another direction. So you can say it's not a perfect clone. The face will not be exactly pixel perfect the, the same every time but for the most use cases the character and the scene feel like they belong to the same world. So this is how you can use this workflow to run Z image turbo in Comfy UI. Use the color Z image turbo film, LoRa to fix your colors and mode, upscale the image and use auto prompt so you do not have to write long prompts every time. So that's it for today's video. Please like, share and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you. Bye-bye.